protection. Well, next up, we have Drake Saxton. We kind of go back in time here. We interviewed the Responsible Drilling Alliance a couple of years ago on this show. and actually haven't had him back on since, so that's our uh, dumb oversight. But Drake Saxton's the current president of the Drilling Alliance. Welcome aboard, sir. Thank you. I really appreciate you checking in with us. Uh, we, we haven't been up there to interview there lately, and you guys haven't been down here lately, so it's probably been about a year or so. So let's remedy that and make this uh, a renewal that uh, we get to visit from time to time. The Responsible Drilling Alliance. Uh, uh, ResponsibleDrillingAlliance.org is the main website. I get the updates every day, but I'm, I haven't memorized that. Yes, well, we've undergone some changes uh, since uh, since you last talked with us, and actually, I am no longer president. Uh, Barb Dramoska has taken over that position. Oh, okay, sorry, my, my mistake, but yeah, okay. So, immediate past president, so we're good, <laughs> well, thank you. Well, Drake, tell me about the Responsible Drilling Alliance. Uh, you, you still certainly are familiar with their goals, so let's mention them briefly since we brought it up, and then we'll get into just the work that you're doing. Yes, well, uh, Responsible Drilling Alliance came into being uh, just uh, by some local residents up in the Williamsport area got together and they were concerned with the effects of, uh, of drilling and began to look into it. And uh, from there, it, it grew into what it is today. They're, they've uh, worked over the years to try to educate the public and get information out uh, in regard to drilling. And uh, presently, they're embarking on a campaign to try to save a lot of the state forest that's being decimated by drilling. Uh, it's really uh, quite unpleasant uh, what happens to forest land as the drilling occurs, but that's their latest uh, program that they're embarking on, and um, we're hoping that uh, we can be successful. All right, dude. Drake, the first thing that somebody would say that it favors drilling would say, well, in what way is the forest being decimated and in, in what way can't it recover? I think of a forest as being a cyclical, cyclical by its very nature. Explain how, how drilling uh, creates this uh, permanent damage. Well, there are a number of things that can happen. Obviously, when you have a, when you have a uh, well drilled, you have a pad, so you lose... Um, four or five, maybe ten acres, depending on the operation, until you have the pad and the water impoundment, uh, those types of things. And from each of those pads, then, uh, in order to collect uh, the gas transport at the market, you have to have pipelines. So those pipelines are relatively wide, and, of course, they cover great distances. So by some people's estimates, in another 15 to 20 years, more than 25 percent of Pennsylvania's forests will disappear because of that. What happens is the pipelines, uh, you can never plant trees, obviously. You don't want roots going down into those pipelines. So they cover them with grasses. That changes the entire um, environment for all the animals that live there. Uh, changes cover, changes how predators do things. It can change the uh, growth in that area. So you'll have different plants, uh, maybe invasive plants that are coming in that weren't there before. Just uh, innumerable changes that are really uh, relatively undesirable. The Pennsylvania hardwood uh, certification, if too much forest is lost, then the Pennsylvania hardwoods, of course, are a large industry in the state, but the Pennsylvania hardwood certification could be endangered or even lost if too much of the forests are uh, removed or damaged. Now, you have spent some of your time monitoring what's going on in the broad region, including Sunbury. Tell me about the, the research and work that you've done trying to find out what's happening in Sunbury, and particularly the Celotex site. Well, the Celotex site, uh, I, I, I preference this by saying I was born and raised in Sunbury, graduated from Shikolini High School. While I don't live in the city any longer, I'm still very interested in the, uh, in the city and the area. I still own property here and have relatives. So uh, I began to look at the Celotex site when I came in contact with a group uh, in Sunbury called Cape Town Crime Watch. And some of their members were actually getting ill from, uh, they felt, from uh, the drill cuttings being hauled onto the site, and they weren't sure whether there were other materials or not coming in, so I began to investigate that. And uh, my latest revelation is there's approximately $2.6 million in, in really fines that the city should have or should collect in regard to that site because of code violations. 
Now, specific, let's start to specify some. Sounds like a total that we wouldn't have time to specify all of them, but explain what's not happening that you think should be happening or that by uh, statute should be happening. Well, I can I can go into some of those things, and I'll preference uh, or preface this by uh, a few comments um, at the uh, most recent uh, Sunbury Council meeting uh, when I presented this letter, and I'll I'll just read a few of the statutes to you later. But uh, when I presented this letter to council, they uh, immediately pointed to Mr. Joe Bartello, who is the uh, head of code. But in reality. I don't believe that it's fair to put everything on Mr. Bartello. Uh, Section 1203 of the uh, Third Class City Code uh, clearly states that it shall be the duty of the mayor and the chief executives of cities adopting the city manager form of government to be vigilant and active in causing the ordinances of the city and the laws of the Commonwealth relating to the government of the city to be executed and enforced. So I, I really don't think that's fair to single out one particular person when uh, the council, uh, as well as the mayor, are responsible. And they've been informed back in June 11, 2012, uh, was my first letter to them. And uh, I've, I've made them very aware of these problems, and they have not acted on them. So the articles and statutes that I'm referencing uh, would be from Sunbury Code, uh, Article 1, that would be 143, Section 2 and 3, Article 3, 147, uh, or I'm sorry, 143, 7, Article 4, all of it, Article 5, 143, 14, 15, 16, and 17. The list is uh, rather extensive, and as I said, I've made the city aware in council, so there, the public was there, and I have done that uh, numerous times. We uh, have a letter before this most recent one of March 18th of this year. I also sent the uh, mayor and city council a letter of deficiency that I wrote concerning a DEP uh, stormwater management application to the DEP, a letter of deficiencies uh, in that application that was submitted by Norfolk Southern Railroad concerning the Celtex site. So the city codes require a stormwater management plan. There's never apparently been any application for that. And they, that's required before any dirt is turned, before there's any, any activity on the site. So we can go all the way back to the time of demolition. The uh, city did issue a permit uh, to demolish the building. But there were other things that were not done that should have been, and, and one of those things should have been a stormwater management plan. Well, I think uh, primarily Joe Patella is being in charge of this, but councils uh, is uh, integral in, in monitoring all of the city's laws, and the mayor is uh, probably the most uh, sort of uh, the biggest advocate for this along the way. Do you feel as though the mayor should be doing more to make sure that uh, some of these uh, permits and then, of course, uh, violations are monitored and brought to light? Well, certainly he's charged with that with the uh, third class uh, city code, and and he should be, and he should have moved uh, back in 2012 when I made them aware of this. But uh, there has been no action until uh, this last council meeting. They haven't taken any city action on this. They've refused to. Uh, I shouldn't say they refused. They simply have not made response to my letters and queries. Uh, they tell me, well, we'll take that under advisement and we will get you an answer, but that hasn't happened since, as I said, June 11 of 2012. So I continued to investigate, and uh, I find that uh, these things haven't been done. Okay, and you're, as a, what is your interest in this? You don't have a financial interest and you're not a resident, but you have, and we very much appreciate your scrutiny. Just don't, don't read more into that question than there really is. But uh, explain your, your good interest in making sure that uh, this city and all the municipalities up and down the valley uh, are in compliance with existing laws. That's a great question, Mark. Uh, I currently live up uh, at a Muncie address, and we live on the Marcellus Shale, and I've experienced firsthand the degradation of that drilling. Uh, you know, beyond the forest, uh, 
Uh, RDA, of course, is working uh, to try to save the force. But uh, I've watched them turn paved roads into dirt roads in three months. They have personally contaminated our water well with methane uh, through the drilling process. So I've gotten to live with that, and I've seen the negative effects, and I, I could go on much longer than our half hour on just those. But uh, when they come to my hometown, there's no more cellus here. There's no drilling activity. And when they come to my hometown, the place I was raised, and they then want to contaminate that, I become very uh, wary. So this is a kind of a personal thing for me. And, um, you know, I've, I've just looked at all the documents, clean harbors. I have City of Sunbury letters where they discuss a stabil stabilization pit, an oil oily water sensor separator with caustic uh, scrubber systems. Well, they have quite a construction project planned there. Uh, I'm not, uh, probably none of those have happened yet anyway. Uh, my understanding is they're not going to go forward with that in Sunbury. But in any event, they certainly have done a lot to the site, and uh, permits uh, should be, uh, uh, you know, I would think anyway. Of course, I'm not an expert on this. So you're still waiting for more answers from the city. Are, are those answers pending, or, you know, are you in a waiting pattern, or is have they said, well, they, those answers don't exist? Forget it. Okay, I've asked the city for, through a right to know uh, request, for any permits uh, that Moran Industries would have and many other items that are required. Uh, they're claiming through affidavit that those uh, documents just don't exist. Okay, so that that you oversee that. Well, what about a lawsuit? I would think anybody with any standing could file a suit in this case. Is that the next outcome? Well, Mark, uh, it's, you know, as laymen, we look at things in a certain light. We're, we're used to watching television, and this is how it's done. But the reality of the law is very, very different uh, than we sometimes think. But we are exploring options uh, right now. Uh, there are not only myself, but other folks involved in this. And we are exploring options uh, in that regard. It's a little early uh, to decide yet which way we're going to go. We want to see the response of the city and the response of, this, uh, of the uh, Moran Industries. So we're, we're weighing our options right now very carefully. I will also tell you that a related uh, part of this, and it's in my letter to the city, it's not news to them, is the fact that I feel that there has been unequal enforcement of Sunbury City Code. And the because the Moran Industries site has not been enforced, we have a real problem in the city in unequal enforcement of the code. You may even uh, term that as a discriminatory uh, practice uh, when you look at things like the Blighted Properties Program. Even though maybe some of those properties were blighted and may have needed to come down, you cannot unequally enforce the law on the citizenry of Sunbury. So that's creating a huge problem. It's going to be a big problem, going to be a big problem for the city if uh, this isn't corrected and in short order and there's obviously uh, some liability there that's going to have to be addressed. All right, to Drake, some additional thoughts today. If anybody has a question for Drake Saxton, uh, former president of the Responsible Drilling Alliance, still a member of it, and uh, still active in our broad region, making sure that uh, the decision makers in our area when it comes to environmental issues, and really all issues, now you're into just redevelopment uh, monitoring. So making sure that all the municipalities around here are complying with all their their own statutes. You're not making up any new ones or proposing new laws. Uh, he's hard at work in that area. <laughs> You laugh, but we got a lot of selective enforcement around here, in case you haven't noticed, Drake. So, uh, But uh, Drake Saxon is on the line. If you have a question for him or an observation that you'd like him to hear, 1-800-795-9565. We did email Sunbury's code officer, so hopefully he'll have a chance to check back in. And, and he, can, he has an open mic here all the time, so he can explain what's happening here if he wishes to. 1-800-795-9565 is our telephone number. Our email address is on the mark at WK.
WKOK.com. Uh, Drake, some additional thoughts here. Really, there's a lot going on, and this uh, this is hardly over. So uh, tell us what, what is next and some additional thoughts today. Additional thoughts, of course, this morning uh, in the Sunbury Daily Item, the Moran Industries came out with a piece that they, uh, you know, really claim that everything's been done properly, that uh, they're a responsible company, and I, I really must disagree with that because Moran would not be using the authority of the Railroad Act, there's a loophole in the Railroad Act that allows them to ship from the transloading site which has been uh, established on the former Celotex site in order to ship residual waste, the drill cuttings mainly from that site. That would normally be classed as residual waste and it would be regulated by the DEP, but because it is an oil and gas uh, waste product, it falls into a loophole. And Rand Industries has used that loophole to escape regulation by DEP. And I, I really have to disagree with them claiming they're a responsible company because they wouldn't resort to a loophole. They would say, yes, well, we'll voluntarily work with DEP and make sure that things are done correctly. So the avoidance of DEP and regulation through a loophole does not represent the responsibility in my mind. All right, well, we have spoken to Moran, or at least left messages with them and asked them to weigh in on this and a wide range of other topics, and so far, uh, no takers there. But, uh, you know, I think they probably are just letting their um, their record speak for itself. You know, they try to stay in compliance wherever they can. We've contacted their guy, Jeff Stroman, a couple times with no callbacks. So hopefully in the years ahead we'll hear from them. Honestly, I, I think they have... Uh, uh, you know, more than an open mic here to, to talk about uh, th their good efforts. Uh, Drake, if you would stand, stay on the line. Uh, David has called in from Lewisburg. David, thank you for calling. Uh, Drake, he can hear you. And now, David, you're on the mark also. Well, uh, it appears to me there's some people that are afraid to appear on WKOK. I certainly want to congratulate WKOK for some extraordinary people they have. I'm specifically thinking of uh, Mr. Moran himself and not one of his uh, spokespersons. It would seem to me if he's responsible and a leader, uh, he would appear on WKOK. In fact, it would be ideal if he appeared with uh, Drake Saxon. What do you think of that? <laughs> well, I think it'd make an interesting conversation, but uh, uh, I think Drake is afraid and would not want to do that. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, Mark, I'd be glad to do that. In fact, I would be glad to uh, engage the mayor and or Mr. Moran in uh, any uh, any discussion or even in a public debate uh, on, on any grounds. I would uh, welcome that opportunity. I got you. I figured. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Just some additional thoughts today, David, before we uh, send uh, Drake off to his good hard work of the day. No, I would encourage other listeners uh, to suggest that Mr. Moran himself appear and or with uh, Mr. Drake Saxon. Uh, again, it would be a demonstration of uh, responsibility and leadership if uh, Mr. Moran did this. But thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Appreciate that, uh, David. Drake, some additional thoughts today. Well, uh, I, I just think that uh, this is going to look or, or require a much deeper look um, I have all of the documentation to support my position, and uh, I would uh, be, as I said, glad to be challenged by anyone because we, it's a very defensible position, and uh, we'll be glad to... Uh, to debate or discuss this with anyone. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for your work. Of course, uh, City Slickers and Sunbury benefit from this kind of effort uh, uh, from uh, one of uh, our neighbors in Muncie. So we, we appreciate your help, and, and hopefully uh, all of these questions are answered. I think they're all – oops, we do have one more person has a question for you. Oops, and I let go of Drake. Are you still there? Yes. Hold on. Corey, are you there? Yes, I am. All right, let's see if I can do this without messing it up beyond recognition. Nope, I let Drake go uh, foolishly and let you go at the same time. So, uh, Corey, you're still there, right? Yes, I All am. Right, what is your question for Drake? I don't really have a question. I want to thank him for helping us with this business up at the Moran site in Sunbury. 
Uh, as a resident here, we tried and tried and tried with no results. So I'm glad that Drake up the board and is helping us, and I want to thank him for that. All right, very well. I inadvertently hung up the phone. Hopefully he knows that we let him go. Usually it makes kind of a loud noise. So, Well, thank you, Cora. Thanks for your information, and thanks for all you do. You lend a lot of moral support and, and keep this going. So much appreciated, Cora. Okay, thank uh, you so much. You betcha. Cora lives down in the Celotex area and has invited to do iced tea on her porch, which we still haven't done, which I don't know. That's just oversight on our part. So uh, we'll have to take her up on that offer. Drake Saxon of Muncie was on the line, former president of Responsible Drilling Alliance, very closely monitoring what he uh, says are over $2 million in fees and fines and uh, other costs that would be associated with a uh, more accurate monitoring and enforcement of the, um, the Moran Industries site in Sunbury. You're listening to On the Mark. We're going to have an open phones uh, segment in a moment. We have Drake back on the line. Drake, is, uh, you were in the middle of your closing remark when we got another call. Any additional thoughts? No, I really don't. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to exploring this further, and I'm hoping that we can get it uh, appropriately resolved and, and stop the problems with uh, not enforcing uh, laws and codes properly. All right. Well, thank you very much. Very much appreciated. Thanks for your effort. Do stay in touch. Keep us informed on this and let us know uh, if you head to a courthouse with any uh, uh, papers with, the, with that uh, blue paper around the outside stapled to the top <laughs> the, the lawsuit uh, the suits that you you and others may file so thank you very much drake thank you mark and have a good day thank you very much appreciated drake saxon was at the sunbury city council uh, meeting this past week and uh, asked a couple of key questions hopefully we'll get some more answers from the mayor and council and the, the code office all of whom uh, hope to maintain a non-adversarial relationship with us and, and to stay in touch with us. Of course, we are unable to get um, John Moran or uh, his uh, good spokesperson, Jeff Stroman, on anymore. They have declined to participate in any of our discussions, um, but they're always invited, and uh, hopefully they'll take us up on that. We're going to take a quick break. We'll have a brief segment of open phones, speedy dialers only on the Central Pennsylvania Chamber of Commerce toll-free line, 1-800-795-956. That's 1-800-795-9565. The Lenape Solar email in basket always open at onthemark at wkok.com. 